Okay, so we're going to continue on with our blog series where we're basically learning by trial and error by just diving into Drupal 8 and, and, and finding out what's new, whether it's different ways of coding against it or if it's just a different UI or what what's going on here. So in this blog post, I decided I wanted to tackle the block system. Everyone has that type of love-hate relationship with Drupal 7 blocks, probably more on the hate side. And we usually barely use it at all or dump a bunch of modules to make it do some of the stuff that we want it to. So let's take a look and see what we're what, what's going on with the block system in Drupal 8. I've already kind of toured the site so I kind of know what I want to show you. I just want I just want you to understand I I'm getting pretty excited. Drupal 8 is looking good and the block system, just the amount of attention that they actually brought to it, it it's it's getting there and it's it's really exciting to see where we're headed. So first thing we'll do is we'll go to structure Right off the bat, a change, it's called block layout. We can go to the block layout page. I mean, right here, already, you can see just, it looks so much better. I mean, it's not like, wow, a massive change, but now our blocks are in the sidebar. Granted, responsively, it will lower to the bottom, but if we're working in a decent space, the blocks are now on the right side, so I don't have to scroll all the way down, find my blocks, scroll up, make sure they're where I want, place them, move them. They're right here. Also, if you start to build a lot of blocks, whether it's through different modules or custom blocks, and you need to find that one block that you want to deal with, it's a lot easier now. You can filter, and it's a dynamic filter. There we go. I mean, it's looking good already, and we haven't even gotten past the UI page. So this is basically... What we had before where you just manage the layout and where blocks are placed inside Drupal. So Drupal 8 is just a cleaner UI, and now you've got this stuff in the sidebar with the search box. Next thing you're gonna notice, we have this tab called Custom Block Library. Let's go ahead and click on that. This is basically if in our block layout there's a button that said, you know, create a custom block. This is where you would see all those custom blocks. So if you wanted to imagine uh, manage just the blocks that you physically created, not created by core or created by modules. This is where you're going to come to manage those. And right off the bat, you're going to notice something different. Not that this page isn't different, but look, types. Yes, blocks now have types. It works and functions just like content types, but they're block types. So just as we have articles and all that under content, we now can have different custom block types types. That in and of itself is just pretty much worth the difference in the block system. But guess what? What can you do in content types? You can field them. Guess what you can do in block types? You can field them. Finally, we can put fields on our blocks and we can start making blocks a lot more useful. Uh, let's just take a look at what we can do here. It comes out of core with one just called basic block, which is pretty much just a title and a body and you can manage those fields. Let's go ahead and create a custom block type to show you maybe why we might want to do this. Let's call this image. You can give a description if you want. Let's just continue on, click save. And now we've got our basic block, now we've got our image block. So let's go ahead and now look, manage fields. These pages look pretty familiar to you, don't they? It's just like working on content types. Look at this, we can have an image field in a block. What? I mean, start thinking about ways you might want to use this personally. Here, you could probably maybe give a content person a sidebar block that contains just an image. And guess what? Now with inline editing, content people could change that image out whenever they wanted to without having to do a whole bunch of stuff with blocks. I can demo that in a little bit here. So let's go ahead and choose our field. We'll choose an image. Click Save. Everything's working just like it does with content types. Let's go ahead and save the field settings. I mean you're getting all these configurations we're not in a content type we're in a block let's just leave it the defaults we're just touring things here and now as we're on this page notice something else different we've got manage form display and manage display so if we click manage display you could if we want that image in there we could say let's hide our label hey we just want an image Let's do something here. Let's go ahead and save the display. Let's go back to our fields. We don't want a block body. Let's just go ahead and get rid of this. Delete it. Perfect. Now, manage display. 
managed form display. We're familiar with those because we know content types, but guess what? Look at this, custom display settings. In another blog post, we went to structure and we looked at display modes, which gives us the form modes and view modes. Scroll all the way down, custom block. Our custom blocks can have view modes. I don't know what to say, but this is looking great. I'll go over, uh, you might be thinking, what the heck do I need that for? I can give you a scenario. But first, before we do that, let's go back to our structure, our block layout. Let's go ahead and add a custom block now. So now when we add a custom block, it's pretty much just like creating content. You can choose what type of block you wanna create. Let's just go ahead and create one of our image blocks. Give it a description. It just wants a description here. We'll just call it dogs. I'm gonna choose an image. Let's just grab dogs wallpaper. Let's go ahead and save this. We have revisions if we wanted. It's doing it automatically. Look at this, view modes. So now this particular block, we've got a view mode. We're just gonna let this be. We could configure the region. Let's go ahead and put this in. Let's say we're gonna put this in our sidebar second. You have your usual things of restrictions and roles. So not too much has changed there. Let's go ahead and save the block. Let's go ahead and see what we've done here. Let's go back to our site. And now we have, look at this, sidebar, block, with an image with a dog. I didn't do anything, this is just core guys, Drupal 8 core. Also, remember when I said you could do a inline edit, you could quick edit, click on the image, look at this. You could remove the image and then re-upload a new image right here on the page, didn't have to go anywhere, didn't have to do anything. Now, on a nice simple Drupal site, someone wants to just constantly change their sidebar image, it's a lot easier out of core. So that's pretty much what we've got here. I didn't do anything, notice that this dog image is nice it's probably using the picture module being responsive as it's supposed to so let's go ahead and go under our structure our block layout and let's continue on to see what else we can do here okay if you notice something over here look at this so i've placed dogs in sidebar second now if i go and look at all my blocks again dogs is still there it's still there drupal 7 once you've placed it it's gone you can't really do anything with it it's not like it's in this inactive state, nothing. Guess what? Drupal 8, a block can now be placed in more than one region. Odd use cases, I'm sure there's ways, maybe reasons why you'd wanna do this, you're doing some crazy things. Uh, but now even with view modes, which I'm gonna demo, we can have different view modes doing different things based on where blocks are placed. Look at how cool this is. So when I click to add this, now we get this nice overlay to configure the placement of this block, but this is the second placement of this block. So for now, let's go ahead and leave it most of it as is. I do want to point something else out here. Oh, I don't know why I'm getting so excited about this stuff, but look at this, display title. Oh, look at that, I can just turn it off. I don't have to come in here and say none. I can just turn the title off, finally. Here's where we can choose view modes. Let's place this in a region. Let's go ahead and place this in our featured region. Let everything else stay, save it. Uh, let's go back to our site. So now look, there's our dog. It's using full view mode and then there's our dog. Notice this one doesn't have a title. This one has a title. Configurations per placement of the block. So what can we do with these view modes? Let's say we're, we're happy. Let's leave our original doggy up here. But this doggy down here, we don't want him this big. We really want him just to be a thumbnail. So let's go to structure. Let's go to our display modes. Let's go to view modes. Scroll down to the custom blocks. Let's add a new block view mode. We'll just call this one sidebar. Save it. Now we've got two different types of view modes in there. Let's go up to structure, block layout. And now if we go to our, uh, let's actually just go to our custom block library. Now in our custom block library, we're gonna go to our types and let's manage the display of our image block. And now we can come down here to display settings and turn on sidebar. Let's click save. Now up here we have our defaults and then we have sidebar view mode. So now I can, instead of showing the original image in the sidebar, I can show a thumbnail. Okay, so now I set that to thumbnail. That's the sidebar, look at default. Default still set to original image. Now let's go back to structure, block layout, and now let's go to our sidebar. Here's our featured dogs. Here's our sidebar second dogs. Let's go ahead and configure this. And now in its configuration, I can choose sidebar 
Let's go ahead and remove the title here too. I can choose view mode sidebar, save the block. Let's go back and visit our site. There's our original image doggy. And now look, no title and it's using a thumbnail. These all have different use cases. It's just showing that blocks are finally, they're maturing. There's more things we can do with them. This was all core. I didn't have to add a whole bunch of modules. So one thing I finally want to show you that is just, yeah, blocks. All the stuff I've been doing, structure, block layout, custom block library, creating block custom blocks, creating types, all these different settings, the fields, the displays, guess what? Now in Drupal 8, because of the configuration management, all these settings are stored in code. Yes, I said that. Blocks, settings are stored in code. So when I set up this demo website to go over this tour of the block system, I actually just quickly dumped this into a repository. So now that I've made all these configurations, let's take a look at my repository. These are changed files. These are actually also new confi files. So as you can see, display block image, block dogs, all these configurations and everything that I've been doing is now in a configuration file. Yes, blocks code. I don't, it's not that much to get excited about. It's just the block system. It's more or less the excitement that you can get. I'm starting to feel for Drupal 8. If they put this much effort into just the block system. It's just, it's amazing what they are doing with Drupal 8. It's gonna be a great contender. It's gonna be just a really awesome CMS system. It just keeps maturing and getting better and better over versions. So again, we took a quick tour. We've learned structure, block layout, a new UI, Blocks can exist in multiple regions. Blocks can have types. Those types can have view modes and fields. You can configure the display. I, and it's all in code. The block system in Drupal 8. I'm excited. I hope you're getting excited. Let me know what you think in the comments. Maybe some questions. I'm pretty sure we're still going to probably want something like maybe context module or things like that. Some of that's not there. And then finally, one thing that did sad me is if you go to people and you go to permissions, the blocks are still just administer blocks. I was hoping maybe just the content portion of it could have permissions, like people could create blocks and put them in regions without needing the layout page. So someone could just create a block and say, put that there. But for now, we're still pretty, pretty limited. It's still awesome. Hope you enjoyed this tour. Drupal 8 block system.